sure enough, I hit 40 years old. My vision started to fade. Um, by the time I was about 42, uh, I was 2070, uh, distant vision, and I needed glasses. So when I heard about the Bates Method, I, I signed up for the course, and I did that program, and I went from 2070 to 2020, and on a good day, 2015, and I've never looked back. I, I'm 61 years old now, and I still don't need glasses. And you know what? It does sound too good to be true, but it is true. Welcome to the Natural Health Matters Podcast, where it's all about maximizing your health potential so that you can look and feel your best at any age. I'm your host, David Sandstrom, and this is episode number 134. Today we have on the show, Carl Vigilante. Carl is a natural vision improvement coach, and he's been trained to teach others the Bates Method that we'll be talking about today. Carl, welcome to Natural Health Matters. Oh, thanks so much for having me, David. It's great to be here. Well, you know, I've been looking forward to this interview. In fact, I've been planning this for quite some time because when I tell people about this method of natural vision improvement, they look at me funny, like, you know, that can't be true. It's just, it sounds too good. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And this is one of those. And you know what? It does sound too good to be true, but it is true. And uh, Carl, I'm excited to have you on the show to talk about this. But real quick, I want to share my backstory. Um, I was an airline pilot for 35 years. And I had great vision and I didn't need any corrective lenses. But the older guys that I was flying with said, you know, Dave, when you get to the age of 40, your vision's going to start to fade. You'll see. You're going to need those reading glasses. You're going to need something after 40. Sure enough, I hit 40 years old. My vision started to fade. Um, by the time I was about 42, uh, I was 2070, uh, distant vision, and I needed glasses. And when I was squeaking by on my FAA physical, because uh, we take a vision test every time we go in for our physical. And uh, I didn't need the corrective lenses um, restriction on my, my license. But it got to the point where the doc says, look, Dave, I'm going to have to fail you on the vision test. You're going to have to get glasses. And what they do is they put a big rubber stamp on your medical certificate that says, must wear corrective lenses. And it was a problem for me because I had near vision and I couldn't see as well distance. So my, my glasses corrected me distance. But then when I looked back into the cockpit, look at the instruments, they were fuzzy. And that, that was a real problem for me. So when I heard about the Bates Method, I, I signed up for the course and I did that program. And I went from 2070 to 2020 and on a good day, 2015. And I've never looked back. I, I'm 61 years old now and I still don't need glasses. And it was, it was just real freedom to throw away my glasses and get that restriction off my FAA certificate. It was, it was just a... a Great experience. I love telling people about it. And I've been, I've been wanting to get somebody on the show that really knew what they were talking about. So, Carl, again, welcome to Natural Health Matters. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your backstory, how you got into this? Uh, sure, David. Um, it was similar to yours, but a little different. So 30 years ago, I was in nursing school and I started having reading problems. So trouble seeing close. Mm -hmm. You were having trouble seeing far, but I heard the same right. thing. When you turn 40, you're going to have trouble reading. So yeah. uh, a lot of stress in nursing school and um, had started having difficulty reading my textbooks. Um, the print got blurry, got headaches, um, mm -hmm. got fatigue, just had difficulty with that. And um, so I recorded all my lectures, took a lot of notes, started listening to audiobooks. And I did that for 10 years. I had no idea that I could do anything different but put on glasses. Yeah. But I couldn't get used to glasses. When I put on glasses, mm -hmm. they made me nauseous, dizzy. Um, and then 20 years ago, um, I was introduced to the book Relearning to See. Uh, by Thomas R. Quackenbush. And it was this thick book on the Bates Method. Mm -hmm. And I studied it. I was on a vacation for about three weeks, and I studied that, uh, did some of the practices. And then one morning, about, about three weeks, I woke up, went out for my morning walk. It was in Illinois, a nice spring day. Um, and as I was walking, I noticed something was different, but I didn't know what it was. But basically, uh, I became really present. I could 
uh, uh, noticed the birds really chirping. The sky was really blue, the flowers, the colors, everything was bright. And I realized I was seeing clearly. So mm-hmm. for me, it just it was like a, a long, clear flash and everything popped into clarity. So when I came back from my walk, I knew that uh, I would be able to read well. And I did. I op- opened a book, could read really fine print. Uh-huh. And that lasted for a few days. So it was like an extended clear flash. And then when I had an emotional upset happen, um, it kind of faded and eventually I got into taking some classes, uh, uh, got trained through Greg Marsh um, mm-hmm. and it was then more of a gradual improvement. And yeah. To where now, I did Greg Marsh's course as well. That's, that's what I used. And did you, did you take Did you do his, uh, audio course i did his audio course yep yes so i i used that as well mm-hmm. and you know uh, followed his guidance in his um, practices mm-hmm. um and to the point now i read a lot <laughs> and i can uh-huh. see clearly uh-huh. and i don't wear glasses um yeah I was just about to say that if you're listening to the audio version, uh, neither Carl nor myself are wearing glasses. And uh, how old are you, Carl? I am 64. I'll be 65 in April. Very good. So here we are both in our 60s. Neither one of us needs glasses to read or to drive or, or to do to live our normal lives. Right. And there's something very freeing about that. I mean, there's a lot of people listening to the show that want to age gracefully. Well, I can't think of another thing that you can age more gracefully with than not needing glasses and being able to see well and hold on to your youthful vision. Uh, it's possible. We're both living proof of that, right? <laughs> so uh, let, let's talk a little bit more about some of the details. So what what is the Bates method? I mean, people hear this, like, you know, what do you mean? Is it a Bates Motel? Uh, <laughs> what, what, can you give us a brief description of what the Bates method is? Sure. Um, well, it started with William H. Bates. He was a, a doctor born in 1860, died in 1931. And um, he was, I guess he would have been a eye, ear, nose and throat doctor or surgeon mm-hmm. back in New mm-hmm. York City. Um, and he practiced like from 1886 uh, until his death. Um, he was a professor at a college in New York City, and from the very beginning, he thought it was very, he, he wasn't comfortable with the idea that um, glasses at the time did not improve vision. He, you know, he noticed that as people wore glasses, often their vision got, got worse. Right. So... He, he, uh, then he noticed that when students and professors lost their glasses or broke their glasses or didn't wear their glasses, their vision improved. So that got yeah. his curiosity up. So he mm-hmm. started working with, just through trial and error, an observation, he started working with students and professors in improving their eyesight through relaxation. Right. So that's what the Bates Method comes down to is its techniques and methods of relaxing the mind, the body, the eyes to, yeah. to let go of the strain that is. Um, and then I can describe a little bit about what happens, but get rid of the yeah, strain. Just, let me just add something, right? Let me just yeah, add something ahead. right there, Carl. And that is, uh, the mission statement of this show is we maximize our health potential when we align our lives more fully with God's natural design for spirit, mind, and body. Mm-hmm. And it's not God's design. It's not part of his design that we hold on to stress, right? right. We want to press into stress now and then. That's necessary and, and healthy, in fact. But we don't want to stay there. 
And that's, that's exactly what the Bates method overcomes, is stress in the eyes, stress in our minds. Uh, yeah, real quick, uh, back to my story. When I was studying, I was just uh, you know, a little bit of the way into uh, Greg Marsh's program. Right. And my wife and I always go away for our anniversary. And we went down to the Florida Keys. We went to Key West and stayed at a really nice resort down there called Little Palm Island. Mm-hmm. And I was looking at the, the uh, markers for the intercoastal channel. Well, actually, not the intercoastal. It's out in the ocean out there. But there was a marker. And it was pretty far away. And I couldn't read it. For me, it was just a green blob. Um, we both went in for a couple's massage, and I got into a very relaxed state. And we're walking back to our little bungalow out there, and I looked at that same sign, and I could read it crystal clear. And I said, wow, this works. There's something about this. And, and it's, all, it's about relaxation. And that brings up one of the questions that I often get from people. Well, I've, I've tried the exercises for the eyes. That didn't work. Mm. This is not exercises, is it? No. It's, in fact, it's just the opposite. Right. It's not exercises at all. Yeah. Um, it's more like yoga for the eyes, right? It is like yoga for the eyes. Yes. Mm-hmm. In fact, that that could be a, a good name for what it is, yoga for the eyes, eye yoga. Yeah. Um, so so I, want, I want to emphasize that uh, the vision improvement that Carl and I have, have enjoyed has nothing to do with LASIK surgery, right? We, we didn't get out, we right. under the knife, right? We did it all naturally um, because... We, if you get in, if you start to cooperate with our design, the way our de- our eyes are designed to work, and the way our nervous system is designed to interact with the brain and the body, uh, things just start to work. It's it's like you don't have to try to see well. Your body knows how to do that. Or your eyes know how to do that. And your mind knows how to do that. Your brain, I rather. Um, we just have to get the obstacles out of the way, which is very much a natural health concept uh, in, in general. And that is identify what's blocking your body from doing what it already knows how to do, and that is to thrive. So your eyes and your brain, they, all, they know how to work together and coordinate to provide great vision. So um, can you talk a little bit about that, Carl, about how, how our eyes actually capture the images that, that are in front of us and send it to the brain? Sure. You just described the Bates method. <laughs> you did. So so basically, the design of the eyes is they, um, they're, they're like the senses, just like hearing, touch, taste. Um, it happens effortlessly. And when we strain, we're blocking that natural way of using those senses. So one of the things that we need to understand about uh, the Bates method is a little bit of the physiology behind the eye. And, and that is there are muscles that surround our eyes that act like a belt, right? And, and it, it changes the distance, just like a camera lens. Uh, in order to focus, the lens will move forward and backward to focus on a certain subject. Well, our bodies do that naturally, where our eyeballs get squeezed by these muscles that surround the eye. And they move the cornea back and forth, just like a camera does. Um, and the trouble is when we get stressed and we start holding on to that um, bodily stress and mental stress, the muscles contract and they don't let go. Even when we're asleep, they're still in that tensed up mode. And the Bates method, when you experience the breakthrough, as Carl was talking about these vision, these flashes of good vision will start to come. It's when you experience that moment of relaxation and you, you're, you're taking away that obstacle and letting the eye do what it knows how to do, and it sends the image to the brain. So uh, can you add a little bit to that, Carl? Uh, sure. Um, so basically, Bates spent years researching, trying to figure out how do the eyes focus, and the predominant theory was, and still is, that the eyes only focus with the lens. But Bates discovered that the muscles around the eyes also do that. So when you're trying to see, when you're looking in the distance, the muscles around, the belt around the eyes, the uh, oblique muscles will squeeze the eye and make it longer from front to back. So you can see in the distance. And Mm -hmm. then the when you want to see close up, the four muscles to surround the eye, the recti muscles, squeeze the muscles, squeeze the eye and make it shorter so you can see closer. Yeah, so it's really all about getting those muscles that surround the eye to relax, 
right? And I know that um, my eye doctor told me this, and many people have said this to me, Dave, this can't work because I know that as you age, your cornea gets more brittle. And therefore, that gets in the way of this process that you're describing of the of the of the muscles contracting and moving your cornea and your eyeballs to squeezing it just the right. It just your cornea is too brittle to make that happen. Well, if that were true, then I never would have gone from 2070 to 2020, and, and Carl never would have done the same thing, and countless other people have done the same thing. If it was just about aging, uh, no one would have decent decent vision in their 60s or 70s. It just wouldn't happen. Well, I threw away my glasses. So did Carl. So that can't be true. It, it can't be true. It's not about your your eyeballs are getting too old and brittle. That's really not the heart of the issue. The heart of the issue is learning how to relax and just let things happen. Um, so is, was that your experience too, Carl? Uh, yeah, and I have never heard the idea of the cornea getting brittle. I've heard the idea of the lens getting hard as a stone or too hard so yeah. you can't focus and... So that's interesting because that's uh, Dr. Bates's story. So um, Dr. Bates, his vision issue was presbyopia. And mm-hmm. he was told by vision doctors, you know, fellow vision doctors, that uh, there's no way he could improve that, that his uh, lens was hard as a stone. Mm-hmm. And even Bates, 100 years ago, didn't know if he could improve it. But he gave it a try and Mm -hmm. he improved his presbyopia within a year, but he didn't even know that it could be done. He was a real trailblazer. Yeah, he was a real (laughs) trailblazer. And he he did four years of really intense research, studying Mm -hmm. uh, eyes of animals (laughs) and figuring out what muscles do uh, the focusing. Well, you know, one of the reasons why the Bates method is so obscure, and if you'll have, people haven't heard of it, is because the optometrist profession, the eye doctors, they're not going to make any money off of, off of teaching you how to not need their services, right? They want you coming in for eye exams, getting your glasses adjusted, getting new glasses. By the way, gla- eyeglasses are very expensive these days, right? So there's no money in teaching people, well, very little money in teaching people how to not need your services, Right. So that, that's that's why I mean, just follow the money trail. And that explains why the Bates method is not very well known. I wish it were more well known. And, you know, through podcasts like this, hopefully we'll, st- we'll start to get the word out to more people. But this is really life changing. It really is to to be able to age gr- more gracefully and, and not need glasses and enjoy that youthful um, vision that, that we had when we were younger, it's, it's very exciting. It really is. It's, it's something that I love sharing with people, and I don't often get uh, you know, a, a block of time like this to discuss it. You know, usually we're talking with some friends at some kind of get-together, and you know, if you talk about it for two, three minutes, that's a long time. Uh, but this is something that I just really want to put in the hands of more and more people, um, and I know you do as well, Carl. So there's you know, a, a few different methods that Dr. Bates uh, developed that that uh, people found very useful, which are which are in his book, the it's a better vision without glasses. Um, but anyway, uh, I used one or two of those, primarily one that really worked for me. So, but you can you briefly describe Carl some of the the techniques, and maybe we can even practice some of it right here. So, so David, how about if I uh, help uh, your listeners, uh, the Natural Nation, to experience some of the Bates method. Yeah, Some I think that'd be a great it. idea. Um, yeah, let's do that. If if uh, if you're listening and you're driving a car or operating heavy machinery, uh, just listen. Don't do this. Um, if it's safe and comfortable to take off your glasses, if you wear glasses or to take out your contacts, you might pause this, go take out your contacts uh, and take off your glasses and then come back. And uh, because the practices, the Bates practices are done basically with your glasses off. Right. That gives your eyes room to relax. So to start with, how about if everybody just closes their eyes and sit up comfortably and you might 
you know, first of all, just notice if you're breathing, how well you're breathing, and just relax your breathing. Breathe naturally. And with your eyes closed, you might imagine that your head is very light, kind of like a, a helium balloon, just gently floating. And you might imagine that your spine is the string of the balloon and your shoulders are just hanging on the string of the balloon. So you're just breathing naturally. Your head is feeling very light and you're sitting up erect and comfortable. And then you could just kind of relax a little from head to toe. This is where some of the Bates techniques are a bit like yoga because they do start with relaxation. Because mm -hmm. the first principle, we might say, we'll call it the first principle of natural vision is relaxation. So that's where you start. So put your awareness at your top of your head and let go, soften the forehead, let go in the face, the eyelids, the eyes, just kind of moving down, release the jaw, let the shoulders release, let go in the arms, the upper back and chest, the abdomen, the hips, just moving all the way down your legs, just letting go. And just breathing naturally, your head feels light, balanced on top of your spine, your shoulders are just hanging loosely. And the first, the first practice we'll discuss is palming. If, if you can, you can palm or you can just leave your eyes closed and imagine that you're palming or um, even just closing your eyes when they're tired. It can be very relaxing. Often we forget to even close our eyes. Like our legs get tired, so we sit down, but we forget to close our eyes. So palming, uh, basically you would take, say, one hand, put it over your one eye, and you're blocking out as much light as possible. Your fingers are on your forehead, and your hand is like cupped over the eye, so there's no pressure on the eye. Your eyelids might tickle your palms, but there's no pressure on the eyeball. And then you take the other hand, place it over the other eye, and your fingers might cross on the forehead. Now, if you're sitting at a desk or um, a table, or you can prop your elbows up on pillows, you can do that. So basically, you're supporting your elbows. But even for now, just placing the hands over the eyes, and with your hands over your eyes, you're blocking out the light and allowing the retina and the eyes to not have to do anything. And now with your eyes closed, you know, Bates talked about helping people come up with something that was pleasant, relaxing, uh, gave them happy thoughts, relaxing thoughts. And that might be different for each person. So uh, for me, I always imagine petting my cat who is laying here right beside me, you know, <laughs> that always makes me smile. Um, you could think of your, your grandchildren. Uh, you could imagine that you're on a beach just relaxing or someplace in nature. And um, so uh, it also helps to think of uh, the next, we'll, we'll say another uh, principle of vision, natural vision, is movement. The eyes need to be moving in order to see clearly. That's the way they naturally work, which is counterintuitive, but movement is relaxing for the eyes. So you could imagine you're on the beach, and let's do that. You can actually put your palms down so that your head can move. Your eyes are still closed. And let's say you're, imagine you're on the beach or you could 
be on a mountain looking out at the vista. But I like to think of the beach because I live in Florida. Uh, So imagine you're at the beach and you turn your gaze a little to the left, a little to the right. You're looking out over the horizon, moving your gaze out over the horizon to the left and to the right. And I would... I would often guide somebody in a scene that's very relaxing or interesting. So you might, as you look to the left, your head and your face, your nose, your chin is moving to the left as well. And you might see a boat out on the horizon. And then you swing your head to the right and you might see another boat out on the horizon. And you're just swinging left and right. Now, this is, as Bates would call it, a type of swing, (laughs) Uh, left and right. And the reason why, my understanding is the reason why we need movement to relax is we only see clearly at the very center of a visual field where right at the center of our retina in the back of the eye is the macula and then inside that is the fovea where you have all your cones most of your cones that see crystal clear Uh, they see in bright sunlight they see color they see sharp and um, that point in our visual field is very small Uh, I don't know how small. I've heard a quarter inch in our visual field. I've heard the head of a pin, just very tiny. So if we... Yeah, either way, it's shockingly small. I just want to to point out something real quick is when you're teaching a student to fly uh, on instruments, there's a a center instrument on the the dashboard. We call it the attitude indicator. And that's where you focus your, your attention. And then you go left to... Uh, uh, airspeed indicator over there, and then you go back to the center instrument. Then you go right to your altimeter over here, and you go back to the center instrument. We're always focusing on that clear area where the macula is really getting a nice, clear sense of vision. Uh, and then you're you're scanning your instrument cluster, uh, and your mind just pulls it all in, right? And and that's I think a microcosm of what our, our brains and, and eyes actually do every day. Especially when, you know, you're describing being at the beach, looking out at the horizon, or maybe it's driving a car, um, or even reading a book. Your your mind is taking thousands of little snapshots of a crystal clear picture, your eyes are, rather, and they're sending that signal to your mind, and your mind pastes it all together into one clear vision, uh, which is pretty cool. I mean, it's miraculous, really, what it, how it works. That's exactly. That's that's very so, – so you're actually trained – when you learn to fly, are you trained to look at the instrument panels that way? You scan. That's, That's exactly right. Wow. You never uh-huh. fixate. So, which is what the same thing the Bates method teaches. You never want to fixate. You never want to stare so, at one thing. So that, let's let's uh, let's have everybody experience the difference. Imagine that you are in that cockpit, and you're looking out the uh, the window. <laughs> whatever you mm-hmm. call that on an airplane, <laughs> the windshield. <laughs> windscreen. Windscreen. And you're looking, you're scanning out across the horizon. You're scanning to the left. And you can move your head with this, let your neck be loose. And you're curious, so you look out to the left, you look out to the right, and you're scanning the horizon. Then you look down at your gauges, you look at one, you scan over, you look at another. But now, imagine that you are staring. So go ahead and look out the windscreen at one point, one spot, and try not to move. Really try. You're looking in the distance. Maybe you see the top of a mountain. You're really trying to see it. You know, what mountain is that? And you're, mm-hmm. you're not moving. And you're staring, you're looking as hard as you can to see what is that point. And notice, are you breathing? Are you relaxed? Are the muscles in your shoulders getting tense? 
So that's the opposite. And you mentioned fixate. You mentioned, how did you say it? You don't want to fixate or you fixate on different right. things. How did you say you, that? You, <clears throat> you don't want to fixate on one thing. Right. You quickly right. move back and forth right. to several focus areas. And that's when things come into focus. And I, I just I wanted to add that that example you just gave is a great one. If you're trying to focus on, on that mountaintop peak, uh, it just without moving your focus, what happens to the peripheral? It fades. It, it You lose all your focus there. You'll only have that one spot that you can see. Uh, whereas you keep your eyes moving, which is part of our design, uh, keep your eyes moving back and forth. As, as Bates said, called it the long swing is what I think he called it. Um, that's the way our, our eyes are designed to work. And we, when we start cooperating with that design, we, we improve our vision. It just, it just happens automatically. So, so that's, uh, let's, let's look at the next principle, which is, it, it, it sounds wrong, but you, you said it right. You fixate at different points. You keep moving. So right. it's central right. fixation. Or mm -hmm. people like to say central clarity because it sounds less staring. But yeah. central fixation is the next principle that we do fixate, but only on that little center part of our retina, you know, the fovea, right. the macula. So mm -hmm. let's do that. So in your, you could leave your eyes closed or close your eyes again and look off to the left. And you could either be in the, let's be at the beach again <laughs> and look off to the left and fixate on the boat on the left. And you notice the numbers on the boat. You see the colors, the color of the sails. You see how many people, you see what they're wearing. And then look off to the right and the boat on the right. And you notice details in that boat. Then look to the left and you notice more details. Then you look down at your feet and you notice a seashell at your feet. Then you look up and you notice the sun is coming up over the horizon. So you're fixating at all these points, but you're constantly moving. Did yeah, you move, move, yeah, I do want to add something there. Yeah, yeah. Movement is uh, good for all of our senses, right? Uh, I play fetch with my dog every morning, and a lot of times she, her vision is not great. And she, if I throw the ball uh, out in the backyard, and she'll lose it a lot of the time, and she has to find it with her sense of smell. Well, she doesn't just slowly go in one direction. She's darting all over the yard with her nose down, looking for that scent. Um, and the same is true with our senses. Um, you know, I, this is the show is for adults. Imagine sex without movement. Yeah. You know, uh, mm -hmm. just you, you could do it yourself. You know, put your finger on your thigh and just leave it there. You know, at first your leg is going to feel that finger, but after a couple of minutes or so, the sensation just goes away. It just gets dull, right? And, and the same is true when we're looking out our windshield, a dirty windshield with a with a bug smashed right in our line of sight. Uh, we, at first we notice it, but after a while it just fades away. Our mind reprocesses that and says, I don't wanna see that. And it actually takes it out of the field of vision, which is pretty amazing. So when we are are, are practicing this movement, the long slide or the, the, um, the deliberate fixation in multiple points, uh, that helps our sense of sight work the way it's supposed to work. And, and the same is true with all of our senses. That's excellent. That's ex that's excellent way to put it. Yeah, um, yeah. All right, Carl, I can imagine uh, one of the things that someone might be thinking right now is, well, if I employed this method, how long would it take to improve my vision? What's been your experience with that? Um, it's... Of course, it's impossible to say because each person is a unique person, but the longer you have mm -hmm. worn glasses or the more extreme your, you know, your lowered vision, the longer it might take. There have been cases of yeah. people just having instant uh, <laughs> miraculous vision improvement, but generally it's a progression. After one session or one lesson, there's always an improvement, always a notice noticeable improvement in vision, but it does take time. It, it could take months, 
some people it can take years, but there's always this improvement, whether it's more comfortable eyes, less sunlight sensitivity. Uh, yeah. If that, uh, yeah, there's no real easy answer for that. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of factors for me personally. It was about, it was about eight weeks, about a couple of months of really doing it. And I, and I would devote, um, maybe 10 minutes a day. That's, that's all that's I was great. doing. It's not like, a, you know, you're doing a two hour mm -hmm. session. I did 10 minutes a day for a couple of months and, and my vision was where I wanted it to be. And which brings up the other question is, well, when you do experience the improvement, how long does it last? It lasts as long as you, in a sense, as long as you use your eyes in a relaxed way. So it's like it doesn't go back and you lose it, but maybe if you're sick or you're going through a very traumatic event, you might have a uh, reduction in clarity, but it can come back as you get yourself centered again, start relaxing. Um, it's the way God made our eyes naturally. So you can't really lose it, but vision does fluctuate. So yes, it gets worse when we're stressed. It gets better when we feel great. Mm -hmm. Very good. So if you could give us, give the natural nation just a couple of techniques, some low hanging fruit that they could start to implement right away, even before doing the whole course. Uh, I know there's a couple of really easy things that, that people can do to start to see, start moving in the right direction as far as their vi visual clarity goes. Uh, what would you I'll recommend? I'll give you a few things. Number one is to close your eyes when they feel tired and rest them. Um, it's very easy to just leave them open, open all the time and barrel through everything. But close your eyes and rest them. And maybe a few habits. One is if you notice you're holding your breath, keep breathing, you know, relax your breathing. And the other is blinking. So often we, especially if we stare, we're not blinking. But if you blink, it's almost impossible to stare. So blinking uh, and the, yeah, another one is shifting. So keep moving your gaze. So do the opposite mm -hmm. of staring. If you find yourself staring, looking, but not really seeing what you're looking at, breathe, blink, and shift your gaze, move your gaze around. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good. And I would add to that this one other thing, and only do this when it's safe to do so. But the number one thing you can do to improve your vision, if you're wearing glasses at the moment, is to go without your glasses. If you need them to drive, put them on when you drive. If you need them to fly an airplane, put them on to fly an airplane. But if you're home, you're watching television or you're reading and, and you can do it without glasses, I would recommend that you do it because when you constantly have your glasses on, your eyes get used to that forcing of the of the uh, the light, the incoming light to the macula. And you're going to kind of train those muscles that we talked about earlier into that stressed position. Um, so when you take your glasses off, you give your muscles the opportunity to relax and start doing their jobs more efficiently. That's very true. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So Go ahead. So another thing, you mentioned LASIK surgery. And mm, something to keep in mind is that LASIK does not get to the root of the problem of poor vision. It doesn't right. address it's treating yeah, a symptom. It doesn't address the strain. It is very, right. pretty much the same as glasses and contacts. It's just now you have a permanent contact it's locked in built into your eyes. So the eyes have to, in a sense, maintain the strain to see clearly out of the glasses or out of the LASIK surgery. Right. So you're, you're forcing your eyes into the dysfunction and with no way out. And you're also, you're rewarding, you're rewarding your eyes to strain. The poor technique. Yeah. So you yeah. can see clearly and you can still strain. So you get rewarded. So it doesn't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Very good. 
All right, man, Carl, this was, this was a great conversation. We could say so much more, probably have to do another episode on it. I wanted to share uh, a few things about uh, the most effective method for me, which was sunning, but uh, I'll have to say that for another episode. Carl, uh, if someone is resonating with this message and they'd like to, like to learn more about the Bates Method or do some coaching, what's the best way to get a hold well, of you? Well, they could go to my website, which is relearn to see R E L E A R N T O S E E relearn to see.com. Excellent. Carl, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you sharing your wisdom with the natural nation today. Thank you so much, David. It's great to be here. For more, go to the show notes page at davidsandstrom.com forward slash 134. There you can find links to all the resources that we mentioned and a whole lot more. If you're enjoying the show, I sure would appreciate you telling a friend about it. Natural health from a biblical Christian perspective is kind of hard to come by, and I'll bet your friend would appreciate you letting them know about the show. And if you have a health question, you want to ask me about a supplement or or anything, really, uh, I'd love to hear from you. You can go to my website, davidsandstrom.com forward slash coffee talk. That's all one word. And you can schedule a uh, 10 or 15 minute Zoom call with me. I'd love to hear from you. That's it for now. Thank you for listening. I appreciate you. I'll talk with you next time. Be blessed.